Stetson Bennett came away looking like the hero for Georgia, particularly in the national title game against Alabama. This video is sponsored by Mississippi Land Bank. Land Bank. And by Mississippi Farm Bureau Insurance. Go! with the home team. So I just thought I'd go back and look, and he made a lot of big throws in the game, some early conversions on field goal drives, but some throws for him stick out more than others, right? And they really got it going late after the mistake. He was perfect after that, right? So let's take a look at a few of his throws and see how they happen just for fun. What a throw by Bennett to put it up into the air to give Pickens a chance to get separation. Now in the playoff game against Michigan, he had a deep throw that I was really impressed with. Everybody was impressed with his performance against Michigan, but this one particular throw where he had a guy coming free in his face and he stepped right into it and just threw this beautiful deep ball. That was like a signal. And I remember thinking when I watched that, wow, he's really turning it on here at the crucial time of the year. And then of course you play the Alabama defense. They got after him early. Um, but he just hung in there and found some throws throughout the ball game that were a big difference in the game. Let's take a look. And they fake it to Bowers. Here's a downfield shot. Guards Pickens, a diving catch. All right, here's the play, and here's the matchup uh, for Georgia. You saw it there. Someone just draw it up straight away instead of watching it first. It's a three by one formation but it's a tight three because of the bunch formation, single back in the backfield. Look at Alabama's alignment, three, four. They got seven in the box, defending a run and two tight ends in the ball game. They put two safeties back. It is a sure enough cover two look. It, it looks like cover two because on the snap on the three receiver side, you have a zone corner, a zone underneath defender, and a zone safety on top on that side. But back here on the back side, they're sort of matching this up. And you're going to see when the back comes out that you're going to have somebody peel out to be the defender underneath. And that's what gives a little bit different look. And he's reading the safety. So on the snap, again, it's not treated necessarily like, man, you've got this cross action coming on with the pitch fake and reverse fake. Tight end going to come out here and draw the linebacker. You see, though, this corner, it's not straight up man to man. He's turning his hips to the outside, feeding him back to the inside and going to run with him, which tells me they're either trying to rotate that safety back to the middle like a single high where he thinks he's got help, or I should be getting help from a two safety. Instead, the two safety is on the hash coming straight up field because of this play action. It's excellent design by the offense, and you're getting exactly what you want right there, which is drawing the safety up. Okay, so if you take a look, like if you were to keep your eyes uh, we can't see nine. We'll look at the all 22. But if you were to keep your eyes on this safety, watch him get drawn up. Here comes a fake. He steps up one step and he's trying to get back out of there, but it's too late because as soon as he steps up, we're already passed and running. And depending on a receiver to run by a corner right here, he's going to do it. Now watch the throw, pull up, see it and put a ton of air under it. You know, the trajectory to me is a big deal. If you try to drill it, you know, it's tougher for it to be perfectly accurate, tough for him to run under it because there's not his ball's not in the air as long. If you throw it up the field and bring him over, he's got farther to go. If you drill it outside or leave it behind, a DB can make a play. It's a perfect throw because it's right in his path and it's got plenty of arc where he's got time to judge this thing and run under it. It's the reason the throw is the reason it's a completion. I know that seems to go without saying, but it's a much better throw than, than you might think. Like, it's not easy. A lot of guys, too, you'll see this, depending on the angle of the receiver, you might bring him back outside, makes it tougher for him to kind of backtrack to it. Or you bring him too far across and he winds up, you know, diving uh, kind of laterally across the field. When you look at not only the trajectory, trajectory and how much air he puts under it, but it's right in the path. Like, he's led him right up. He doesn't have to adjust outside or inside. It's just straight up the field, right on the hash. It's like almost if you were running this drill and you told the quarterback, okay, your deal is put it down there at 40 yards on the hash mark, and that's where you expect him to be. He's put it right on the hash mark. It's an outstanding catch, but it's a great throw also. Here it is, the all 22, and you get a much clearer picture of what Alabama is doing. Now, it's all 22, but you're kind of covering it up with your graphic right there. But there's the corner, and there's Pickens down here, single receiver. So if I go back to what Alabama did, initially a safety up high and another safety on the hash. It, it looks like a two-safety look with corners who are out here in a cover two look, right? But when I watch the play happen, 
I see the cor this safety step up. I see this safety stay in the middle and begin to run with the crosser. And then I see this corner drop and this drop. So what I think is happening is they're giving him a cover two look, but what they're actually doing is planning on bringing one safety down and rotating to cover three. Safety in the middle, corner has a deep third, and this corner down here would have a deep third. One, two, and three. I think that's what they're rotating to as a zone cover three. So if that's what you get, we'll roll the play. He takes a snap. You see what's happening? Here comes tight end up the middle. Safety jumps on it. Deep third is his responsibility. Corner drops backside with a flat defender underneath. And if he's responsible for deep third on this side, then obviously he's going to turn and run with him. That's his responsibility. He does have safety help in the middle, so he's positioned himself to the outside to take away uh, the sideline. But the play action has brought this safety down a step and has occupied the safety in the middle with this, you know, tight end right here, coming up the field, kind of running that, um, that cross, getting to the other hash. See that happen? I mean, what's a quarterback's read right here? You know, it's probably going to be whoever that deep safety is. You know, it's so obvious that that's the deep throw. It ain't much of a read, to be honest with you. But if you were being covered, and in the design of the play, it's probably, well, who is that deep safety? If it's two, if there's two safeties, I'm gonna read the one on that hash. I'm either gonna come here or over his head, we're gonna put him in conflict. If it's one safety, same thing, I'm gonna read him. If he's lateral, I'm going deep. If I see him retreating, I'm gonna expect this guy to find my hole over here and throw it to him. You know, that's probably the read. So in this case, they rotate to cover three. I think his eyes are on that safety. It looks like they are right now. And again, it's a really clear lead that the ball should go to the outside and go back to the throw. It's a perfect throw up the hash and outstanding catch. Tight end, Fitzpatrick. Now another flag. Bennett launching. Mitchell. Caught it. Touchdown, Georgia. Here's a big play, fourth quarter, and Alabama actually ahead in the ball game, and Georgia's going to score on a free play because of an offsides. Now, Georgia's in two by two. You can't see one that's off the screen. So four receivers, two by two, single back. And Alabama's lining up with four on the line of scrimmage, two linebackers in the middle. There's six in the box. And it's a matter of like where are they coming from? Are they going to come? Are they going to cover what? Here's what happens on the play is what Alabama's doing is they've lined up four on the front, but they're going to drop the two off the edge and bring the two in the middle. Okay, so it's still going to be a four-man rush. It's just not this four. It's actually going to be the two down and the two linebackers. Okay, those four are coming, and the outside guys are going to drop in coverage. Just trying to confuse your protection a little bit right here. So Alabama is a little anxious, right? And so they get caught on a snap, trying to time the snap. They show you what they're doing. Linebacker steps down, and uh, you get a guy jumping into the neutral zone right here. And it's not by much. Like, he doesn't jump way across the neutral zone. He just nudges right there across the ball. Uh, center snaps it perfectly. He's now snapped it with him in the neutral zone. So you have a free play. The thing that's interesting to me is the only flag I see coming in here that's thrown is from this official on this side, which is to the back side away from the vision of the quarterback as he looks to the right. I couldn't see a flag thrown over here. So I'm, I just, I say that because, you know, a quarterback, if you know you're offsides and I have a free play, it's easy to make this decision and pump it down the field. And I'm just, I, I would love to know from the quarterback how he knew this was a free play. Cause you see right now, I don't, I mean, no flag. He's assuming we've gotten them offsides. <laughs> he looks to his right and throws the go route up the sideline. And I don't know that he ever saw a flag or if it's just assuming, taking a chance that it's a free play. You know, again, the flag comes over here. And two, he never looks this way on the free play. This receiver on the backside actually beat his man worse and, or I say better than the guy on the far right. He's just taking that matchup. I think part of it too, uh, the reason that he takes that side is because of this. Okay, we got free play, but they're bringing a guy in the middle. He's breathing down my neck into the backfield quickly. My back does pick it up. See, he's already made the decision. I'm going to escape this way. And so that takes his eyes away from, you know, this back side of the field. And then pump it up there, free play. But again, I, 
maybe it's over here and I don't see it. I don't see a flag over here on this side of the field. There's not one in the middle. I think he's just knowing, okay, we got him. I'm taking a chance here without actually having to see a flag to know. And then this is an example of that 50-50 ball. You know, we've got the Alabama um, uh, video that I made about Bryce Young not getting catches. I'll give you a link up here if you want to click that and watch that. See, so this is an example of Georgia a young guy winning a 50-50 ball. It's not a perfect throw. It's actually a little behind. You see that? See him reaching back. It's not out in front. It's actually a little on the back shoulder. He's reaching back to go make this play. He's just winning the 50-50 ball instead of the DB. It's an example of, of Georgia won 50-50s on both sides of the ball in this game, and Alabama did not. See, so again, you know, a little bit of contact, nothing major, but he goes back and makes the play. And, you know, it's... This is an example of a receiver making a play for his quarterback. Okay, here's the All-22. Receiver is still off the screen even in the All-22, but that's where you're going with the football. And, of course, here is where you get a guy in the neutral zone on the, and, and you snap it with his hand in the neutral zone and you get him. Um, what Alabama is doing coverage-wise, what they plan to do, they put the two safeties in the middle against the four receivers. You can see on the coverage they're going soft corner, quarter of the field, Safety, quarter of the field, other safety, quarter, I mean, uh, half of the field. Okay, it's what it looks like to me. Quarter, quarter, half is what the coverage looks like to me because this corner was going to be an underneath if anybody threatened him because that's why he's turning him loose up the field right there. So it's quarter, quarter, half coverage. So with a corner back, you, you know, if you're Alabama's coach, you're saying we shouldn't get beat right here. It's just a 50-50 ball thrown up by the QB. So when you, when you watch it, watch the guy over the guard. He jumps in the neutral zone right there, as we talked about from the previous year. They're bringing two in the middle. He's, if he's in the neutral zone, it's barely by the, you know, the tip of his nose right there. And the center goes ahead and snaps it. And so you know, as a quarterback, I'm, I'm assuming I've got him right here. Okay, and again, like we talked, this is sort of that sixth sense that a winning quarterback has to have. He doesn't see a flag. There is no flag to look at. I'm assuming I've got this, I believe. You know, again, eyes in the middle of the field, watch the safety stay there. I'm going to go to that outside. Pressure moves him over, and then just pump it out there. I mean, at the time that he's throwing the ball, if you look, he's already throwing the football as the official is throwing the flag for offside. So again, it's not like he saw a yellow flag to know for sure I have a free shot. He's, it, it's a sixth sense here. I know I'm going to take this. I'm assuming we got him in the neutral zone. I'm going to take this because also you look, I mean, they're even right here. He's not open. He has not run by him. It's not like you got some big red flag out here going, oh, he's wide open. Give it to him. No, he's assuming free play. Even though I haven't seen a flag, I'm putting it up for him to take a chance right here, and it works out. As Bruce Arians says, no risk it, no biscuit. And here's that late touchdown to Bowers, lined up here as a tight, tight end. Let's just break it down real quick. Um, it's two receivers, two receivers, but tight to the formation and two tight ends. So it's two by two, four wides out of the gun, but we've bunched it in there tight. Look at Alabama's. Uh, the way they're defending it. Three down linemen, one, two, three, and then one, two, three, four linebackers. Seven guys right at the line of scrimmage. Okay, so you can see what the quarterback sees. Safety walk down over tight end. Safety walk down over tight end. Corner bump coverage. Corner bump coverage. This is straight what we would call zero coverage because there's zero guys back deep in uh, safety or help coverage uh, at all. So, what is uh, Georgia called? It's a great play call for this look defensively. It's going to be RPO zone read-ish. Now, again, whatever they've called in terms of how they read it, I don't know. I'm not in the huddle. Whether or not this is an actual read or a dead giveaway or it's just a pull, I, I don't know how they've called it. But, you know, there's the chance that you're reading the in-man unblock, right, because the tackle's down on the first inside. And so it's a chance you read that depending on how it's called. And if it is, it'd be the right read, right? Because he's inside. So I know automatically as a quarterback, I'm going to pull and go to the next read. And then what is the next read? Next read would be that sixth or seventh defender just outside. But in this case, it'd be the eighth because of their defensive alignment. You know, if he runs out, I got the option to pull and run myself. Uh, if not, we're going to pull it up and throw it. So Read one, pull, 
read to immediately it's throw that screen now again it does look like a screen call it could be an adjustment at the line of scrimmage on bump receivers already blocking and now i know i'm going to give it to my tight end out here and it's just an excellent play call because unless he really sprints if that's his coverage responsibility in man to man he still can't get there now and i think they might have actually pointed that out in the broadcast saying okay look if this indeed is the call, fire and fire off the edge by the safety, then that means we're in man-to-man -man and that's, that tight end's got to be somebody's responsibility in man coverage and right here they're slow to get out there. So pull it, throw it, <clears throat> and here we are. Now it's one-on-one -on -one, and this is a no chance. If this block is happening, then we've scored right now. You can go ahead and strike up the band and start the celebration because once you get this look, if they give you that look against that play call um, and we complete it, there's no stopping it. We just need one block or even a little bit of a block and you're not stopping 19 from getting any end zone right there. You see his eyes in, pull and throw it out. Great play call at the exact time they needed it against that defensive look for Alabama. So hats off, literally, to Stetson Bennett. Such a great story, such a great competitor. And he's really an inspiration, I think, to a lot of people that you just, you keep plugging and scratching and clawing and working and eventually something's gonna come out the other end. So um, proud to see that happen for him. Thanks for watching. I'll see you on the next one.